Welcome to Artflex on CBA TV. My name is Muti Olawi, the host of this powerful show. The only show that you can get to know things beyond the boundary, as far as this country is concerned. So, meet me on the other part of the studio where we will discuss about the life of Sudanese uh, uh, writer. Who is this person? Perhaps when we get there, we will still discuss about it. See you there. Welcome back to the other side of the studio. Um, today, as I've told you on the other part of the studio, we'll be discussing about uh, Tayyip Sali. Tayyip Sali is um, a Sudanese writer. And as I've discussed earlier, I told you that uh, we'll be going deeply into the Sudanese uh, world, but this time around narrowed down to the world of an individual which will capture the entire country. So, uh, as usual, my guest is here to do comprehensive uh, exploration of the work of this great author. So, welcome to the show. Yeah, thank you very much for inviting yeah. me once again. Yeah. Um, we will be looking at this writer and particularly the book itself. Um, we talk about a season of migration to the north. Mm -hmm. Which part of the north? Is it the North Africa? Is it the North, uh, North Pole? Or is it uh, just the northern part of Sudan? I want us to go deeply into the, uh, the what we can refer to as the background of this very interesting book. What is it about? And who is this man? Uh, Taif Sali is one of the greatest, if not even the greatest uh, of the of Sudanese writers and uh, is well known around the world and you know is uh, quite prolific when it comes to the use of arabic and english language but he chose to document his works in in arabic which okay. was uh, more like is more like his mother tongue uh, second language in uh, sudan mm -hmm. so and uh, his ideology is anchored on the uh, post colonial discourse mm -hmm. and that is where that is his fault that is where you find uh, the book uh, the most of his works and uh, prominent amongst his works are uh, the season of migration to the north, which is what we are discussing today, and the wedding of, uh, of Zayn. Mm -hmm. So it looks at how the interaction between colonialism and, uh, and the, the Sudanese society and what uh, effects or the after effect that colonialism and imperialism has left. Before you go deeply into the, uh, this um, uh, exploration, uh, you made mention of the fact that um, he focused more on the post-colonial uh, era yes, of the country. Yes. Does that mean that he's uh, um, a post-colonialist as a writer? Uh, yes, definitely. That's what he is. And if he is the greatest, as you have said earlier, does that mean that um, there were no writers during the new, I mean, pre-colonial and colonial era of uh, the of Sudan? Certainly, there were writers, and even now, there are still writers, but uh, he's widely regarded as uh, one of the best ever emerged from, for, emerged from the country. Okay. And, you know, uh, his influence goes beyond uh, the Sudanese uh, society, mm -hmm. goes beyond, uh, you know, even down to the Western world, mm -hmm. uh, because of the, not just, because of the, the particular uh, theme that the novel deals with. You can say it's like a... The, the Chinua Achebe of the Northern Africa, okay. of Northern Africa, yeah, yeah, because as we know, he was born in uh, 1929, I think that's July 12th, July 12th, yeah, and uh, he died in uh, February 2009, but before that, his influence is widely felt, and uh, even the wedding of Zayn was made into a film, which uh, uh, won an award, a prestigious award then. So, like that, you know, the, his influence is widely felt, and because of that, he's regarded as one of the greatest. And not just, it's, uh, like I was saying before, when you look at Chino uh, Achebe's things fell apart, it's a reaction against the Western perception of Africa. Mm -hmm. The same way uh, Taif Salih tr tried to answer uh, the, the way the perception of Africans, it's like the Northern, the Northerners, how the Western uh, world view, uh, view the Oriental part of Africa. Mm -hmm. So, and that is what uh, gave birth to the novel, Season of Migration to the North. Mm -hmm. 
Um, one thing I want us to first look at, um, if you look at the Arab world generally, mm -hmm. but very Muslim dominated the uh, Arab world, yeah. you find religiosity and perhaps spirituality attached to it. Does it have anything related to uh, for that in this text? Uh, particularly, if we are not only the season the, uh, to the north, we're talking about the entire work of this guy. Looking uh, at his background, yes. Yeah, so looking at looking at his background, uh, you know, the if you look at the work very well, mm -hmm. you see uh, the influence of the Islamic religion mm -hmm. in the, the work, mm -hmm. particularly in the characters. Mm -hmm. If do do we have to we talk about their names? Mm -hmm. Because most of them be Muslims name Muslim names like uh, Mustafa Said, mm -hmm. uh, Majud, uh, Usna, and like that. You have uh, Fatma, like the names that are all Islamic names. Mm -hmm. But aside from this, when you look at uh, even their lifestyle, the way they live, mm -hmm. they live more like their culture is closer to the Arab. And these are people that have had interaction with the Arab society. Most of them, even there's a character there that has uh, been to visit Egypt. I think that's uh, Wadres. Mm -hmm. He has been to Egypt. They share border with Egypt. Yeah, they share border with Egypt. You know, they've, they interact with the Islamic world from time to time. There's that close interaction so their culture is uh, basically or mostly influenced by the islamic uh, co uh, society right, of the let's Quran. look at the the synopsis of this very interesting uh, uh, book all right uh, you know the the book if you're looking at the book you can look at it from two uh, basic aspect. Are you reading that's a love novel? And that is why uh, Saib Tale is regarded as one of the fi finest writers from from, uh, from that part of Africa. Because the novel, there is that level of uh, profundity. If you read at, uh, the first time, you may not immediately catch the message. It's on the surface level looks like you are talking about the lifestyle of uh, an obscure man who is Mustafa Said. Mm -hmm. But when you go to the deeper level, you begin to see post-colonial discourse mm -hmm. attached to the work. Mm -hmm. the, 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 the question of the West mm -hmm. or the African society writing uh, the, the colonize, writing back to the colonizer mm -hmm. and telling them that this is uh, the way you view us and this is the way we are. So it's about... Uh, uh, we have a narrator who talks about that who, who uh, he attended uh, he's, he got school abroad he was educated mm -hmm. but the kind of education he received he had he had a phd which was rare for anybody to uh, to have then mm -hmm. and his name was not mentioned in novel though but he was a narrator he was just he's the one telling us the story mm -hmm. then he just came back to sudan yeah. and when he came back to sudan he found out that the village he had left some uh some years back, he has, has, he has started changing. It's no longer the same one that they left behind. Mm -hmm. So there has been there has been certain elements of uh, of uh, the colonial influence being felt in the village. So things were changing, and uh, his own friend uh, became one of the young uh, youngest leader of the of, of the society. So you can see that from uh, the jetocracy, the leadership of old people, mm -hmm. you are now having the young people taking assuming position of power and this was not just reflected in that village it's reflected in sudan because younger people were coming into power it was not the monarchical system that yeah. as was before or leadership by age or this thing or by the vastness of somebody in quran or spirituality yeah. 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 it was now a political setting democracy coming in and when it came in it was accompanied by corruption yeah. which was a dominant part of what uh, we see in the novel too but although it was more like it was happening far away in the capital but yeah. it was also experienced in the village so it's purely a village life about a vi about village life and when he came back he met uh, uh, things he, he met somebody strange in the village Mustafa Said and Mustafa Said claimed to be just a farmer farming he was making progress and even he had taken he came from nowhere nobody knew where he came from and he settled peacefully among the people but there was that thing about Mustafa Said that made him look different from every other person. He was not assuming, but yet he looked different. And this, this, uh, the narrator suspected that. So until one day when he uh, overheard him in, a, in his drunken state, mm -hmm. he recited verse in English language. Mm -hmm. Pure English, and you know, being uh, someone who wrote his uh, PhD thesis mm -hmm. on even on an English poet, on English poetry, mm -hmm. When he heard that, he knew that there was more to this man than what I am hearing. So well, he pressurized him. Yeah. He pressurized him and asked, Who are you? Tell me who you are. 
So at the end of the day, Mustafa Said had to come out open to tell him about his life. Then we discovered that Mustafa Said was a child of colonialism. He was uh, born in the, in the Sudanese society, like every other child. But, you know, because of his performance in school, the white uh, colonialists took interest in him and uh, took him outside. They went, they, 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 they adopted, yeah, adopted him and uh, schooled him. You know, he traveled to London, even became one of the best uh, academic there. And while living there, uh, there was this fascination, uh, the, the white fascination, mm. uh, to the black orientalist uh, where he's from. So, erotic you know, complex. No, 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 not exactly erotic complex. It was more like uh, there is that connection. These white people wanted to try something extreme, something wild, mm. and they believed that the African man from the oriental part of Africa is an image of that uh, is, can fulfill their fantasy of uh, meeting the, the perfect Arab or the perfect okay. orientalist. So they were fascinated with him, and mm. as much. As those that came to him came to him for love and warmth, yeah. they, they found themselves destroyed because Mustafa's heart is made of stone. stone. He was unable to love as he should. And the more they came to him, most of them, in fact, they, all of them end up being dead. Mm -hmm. The fourth one, I think he killed by himself mm -hmm. because that one was uh, taunting him. And these are white ladies who loved black men. There's that relationship between which he explored in the book, the relationship between the African society mm -hmm. and the western world you know you, they love wild things uh, oriental things and they want to affi uh, be affiliated with it and you see, every of those ladies have a background maybe their parents or their grandparents had at once been in the colonial system in africa in a part of africa mm -hmm. so when they see him it's an image of what the fantasy that they've dreamed of mm -hmm. and they want to explore uh, things with him mm -hmm. at the end of, but at the end of the day when they find out that he is unable to give to reciprocate the love they want mm -hmm. they end up killing themselves they become frustrated and die mm -hmm. So at the end of the day, he was sent to prison there because of the lady he killed. And when he left prison, the people said he was brilliant. He was given the best of education. But why should Mustafa Said betray the trust that the Western society has placed in him by educating him to the highest level of life? He had written so many books for himself because he is an academic and very intelligent too. So they could not understand why he would go into barbarism, what they, what they calculated as barbarism. So when they left him, he had to come back to Sudan and uh, settle down. So he decided not to live a, the opulent life that he lived before and decided to just follow down and become a normal farmer. So when the narrator discovered this, he was amazed at the extent that this man has come in life and after being there, today he decided that I just want to be a simple farmer. Mm -hmm. So, but uh, things moved on in the society as usual. The secret was kept, mm -hmm. but the Mustafa Said decided again that the place was not cool, calm enough for him to stay. So he had to move because he has always been a man on the move, moving from one place to the other. Mm -hmm. And this has made his, uh, he doesn't have that feeling of love. He had two children though, with Usna in the village there. Mm -hmm. And when, before he died, he wrote a will. And in his will, he handed over a secret room and the care, the, the, uh, the care of his family to the narrator. Mm -hmm. So one night, there was a heavy rain and, you know, they discovered that Mustafa Said was nowhere to be found. Mm -hmm. So mysteriously, he disappeared. Perhaps he left, nobody knew, or perhaps he, was, uh, mm -hmm. he got drowned in the, in the Nile, mm -hmm. but nobody could ascertain how he died. So nobody kn knew whether he was still alive mm -hmm. or dead. Mm -hmm. But even after his death, mm -hmm. it was as if this man was bound to bring destruction mm -hmm. to everything that comes in contact with him. Mm -hmm. Even after his death, his widow becomes uh, a subject of his disputation. Mm -hmm. The friend to the narrator's father, mm -hmm. who is an old man, is a randy old man who loves to uh, uh, befriend young widows and girls. So after Mustafa Said left, he was fascinated with Mustafa's widow, Usna. And Usna wasn't interested in marrying him. But the society they lived in was a society that, uh, that a man owns the, the women. So women don't have a right to say anything. If the fam your family decide that this is who you are going to get married to, you, get mar you, have, to, you have to follow. And Usna said, over her dead body, will she marry the man they want her to marry because he is old and she doesn't want to be with him. Mm. But Wadrej was so interested in getting married to her mm. and they had to call the narrator from the city from Khartoum to come down. Mm. When he came back to the village, the father sat him down after a brief joke, some jokes, mm. they told him the issue and implored him to discuss with Usna because mm. they believed that Usna would listen to her, mm. being the one in care of, is the one in care of the family, so he has to decide. 
But when he stood, he wasn't happy with the situation. Mm -hmm. And Usna begged him to take her as a wife because he, she doesn't want to get married to the man. But instead of accepting, he did not, not because he already has a wife in cartoon, but he just doesn't feel like accepting her. And he discovered that also he loved her, but he could not come out openly to say that this is what I want from you. So at the end of the day, he could not, he did not have much role to play in deciding whether the woman comes to him and he left for cartoon. The next thing she was, Osna was forced into marriage with yeah. Wadrais, and Wadrais tried to consummate the marriage. When he tried that, Osna hid a knife and brought out the knife where uh, Wadrais was trying to force himself on her. On, on her. She killed Wadrais, mm -hmm. and when she killed Wadrais, she also killed herself. And you know, there was much bloodshed. It was something that has never happened in the village before. It was a noble thing that a woman would, would decide her fate for herself, would decide that this is the man I want and she doesn't want another person again. And even at that, to go to the extent of stabbing the man who is believed to be lawfully wedded to her. And at the end of the day, she also stabbed herself, committed suicide. So it was, it was more like the, the, the effects of uh, colonialism. Things were changing rapidly mm. in the side. That's why I compare Taib Sali mm. to uh, the English uh, romantic writer, that is uh, Thomas Hardy. Thomas Hardy. Thomas Hardy, because the detailed information he gives to us when it comes to the minute changes that take place in the society, the way the society was changing, uh, very minute, the, something that a, the past, just a layman would not even observe, but he was able to see that those changes are th as things were changing from the old society that was based on Islamic law and everything, and people were going the other way looking for new things. New young leaders were coming, emerging from society, whereby a society that, us that usually had old leaders. Yeah. A society where women was, was submissive was has now become a, wo a society Impressive. where women were deciding for themselves and they decide to do whatever they want to do to the extent of taking the life of another man who is a husband. It was more yeah. like... Yeah, but it was, it, it, it was unheard of that she will not be free if she's alive. Yeah. Find something that will torture her and make her like yeah, so the, you know, the, you know? The, the narrator at the end of the day regretted his action that he perhaps he should have taken, mm. should have gotten married to her and uh, stop while dry from oppressing her. But it was too late then, he could not take much action. Perhaps the interpretations he gave is Al Fitna Aswad Domina Kotli. Catastrophe is worse than death. Hmm. You know, she does not want to face the catastrophic experience that might be put into her life by the society. So the society to eliminate herself. But, uh, but you know, it was yeah. more like it was a shock to everybody in the village there because they have never seen or heard of such a thing before. It was more like a novel thing coming. Mm -hmm. So it's more like the effect of colonialism was bringing in things that were unheard of to society. It was like an abomination. This in detail. Let's mm -hmm. go for a break. When we come back, I believe you are going to enjoy mm -hmm. the other part of the show. See you then. Welcome to QETC Qalam Educational and Technical Center. I am Ahmed Mohamed Ahmed. I am a student of Qalam Educational and Technical Center. Qalam Educational and Technical Center is a place that you can improve your English language. I came with zero English. Now I am better. Come to Qalam Education and Technical Center. This will help you to improve your English, your listening, your speaking, your writing and reading. If you want to speak confidently without fearing, come and try Qalam and learn how to speak in front of thousand people without fear. <laughs> Welcome back from the break. We were talking about uh, uh, Sally's uh, season of migration to the north. Uh, this is a very tragic uh, story. Mm. It's um, a pathetic story, particularly for the innocent woman huh. who unfortunately married a heartless, stone full mind dead person and um, ended up killing herself because she could not find happiness 
or she thought that uh, life could be miserable for her if she continued to live in this stressful world. Let's go back to this uh, same story. There are a lot of things that we need to discuss about this. You know? The issue of uh, colonialism. Mm -hmm. So the effects of colonialism on the life of the people, the post-colonial trauma. Yes, exactly. Uh, that transfer to the society and turned to society to become a cannibalistic or a kind of uh, tragic setting, particularly African society. Hmm. Let's discuss about this in detail. How has this colonialism affected yeah. the life of the Sudanese? Based on the story, but you know, based on the, based on the story, what I want you us see, to look at the life of these uh, two, the what, narrator and the central character. Yeah, what you see there, what you see there, we see most of us are hid, who has uh, got into the pinna uh, the pinnacle of Western education yeah. and life, but yet the Westerns still think of him as a barbarian, mm. and you know, the narrator himself discovers that even with his education, Mustafa Said once asked him, yeah. he said, what did you do as for your PhD? He said he wrote about uh, the life of, a, of an English poet, an obscure English poet. And Mustafa Said told him, why do you bother yourself with those things? What is the use of studying that poetry when your people here need you? What effect can that have on the people's life? I should be talking of something like agriculture, or economics, or something that will benefit the people. And it shows because the narrator was had no relevance in the life of his people. Yeah. And he hoped that with the with after acquiring the uh, the Western education up to the PhD level, he would use it to affect the change in life of the people. But he could not add any value. Rather, it was his classmate Majud who who became the leader of the society mm. uh, you know the, he became the leader of the society and it was the one adding value who did not have much educa education as he had mm. but this man after the secondary school education Maju told him I think I'm done I've had enough mm. so I need to just look at something I can I can do and this guy was there presently physically and assisting the people mm. he became well recognized mm which is what narrator could never aspire to, could not become in society. So basically, the idea is that Western education, if it doesn't look at the advancement of the, Af of the African people, is as good as useless. Yeah. And that is what happened with Mustafa Said. Mustafa Said had a room full of books, mm -hmm. and that was the secret room he bequeathed to mm -hmm. the narrator. On the getting the narrator thought maybe it was a chest full of good that would be in the room, only to open and discover that it was mere books. Mm -hmm. And you know, after looking at the life, uh, life of Mustafa Said and seeing that there was virtually no uh, no pleasure in life. He decided to take his own life and he wanted to sink himself in the river until he started shouting for help and decided to just to get rescued because before that he even had a fight with his, his best friend Majid who was the leader of the people. You know, there's that idea. That's why I said that there is there are two levels of the, the novel. You can look at it from as a love story of Mustafa Said or the left uh, escapades of Mustafa Said. But you can also look at it as uh, the colonial society uh, looking at the, uh, or analyzing the level of the damage done to the African uh, society that was colonized. You know, you pick somebody from here and think that the best thing you can do is to give him Western education, and you're not considering how useful mm -hmm. is this education they're giving to, to this man, to his own people. So, and also you look at it that, uh, you know, when Joseph Conrad wrote The Heart of Darkness, and uh, uh, basically in code, labeled Africa the, as the heart of darkness, that is where the death of the white man lies. Yeah. You know, and uh, in there we begin to see that the problem is not is not African uh, drawing the white man to his state. It was the white man who was always seeking death yeah, yeah. in Africa because of their greed, mm -hmm. their love for the wide and exotic things, mm -hmm. and that was the image that this, that the white woman, the white woman became the image of the colonizers mm -hmm. who saw the African as the wide exotic thing that they needed to prey upon. And when they got their destruction, what happened from Mustafa Said? The white society decided to jail Mustafa Said. You can see that the symbolic yeah. aspect is that Mustafa Said is the African. The white man does the same thing to Africa. He comes to Africa and he rapes Africa, literally. Yeah. And when he rapes Africa, he's is awarded that he is colonizing, uh, is, uh, is civilizing the African race, he is applauded for that. Branding uh, the, the African. Now, the African man goes there and does basically uh, a symbolic, more of the same symbolic to the white man, mm. to the white woman, and there he is jailed and called a barbarian. Mm. So, should we call the white men barbarians too for coming to, African, to, to Africa to colonize us? 
and literally raping mm. the, the the continent mm. then still they, they are awarded as being civilized yet a black man does something similar to that and they call him a barbarian and put him in jail mm. that means that the white colonialists deserve to be in jail for their actions yeah. in africa too yeah. so, that is the discourse that Tales book opens yeah, up yeah. in in the novel yeah. so we begin to see that uh, that comparison of the way the western world views africa and the way africans the relationship that is exist between both of them and you can see that the narrator comes back with a phd degree yet is unable to achieve any change mm. in the life of the people that uh, that the society himself. even for himself for him to have got up to phd uh, and you see of, uh, trying to commit uh, suicide that's stupidity. Uh, yeah, because after looking, yeah. after looking at his life, he felt yeah. that everything he has achieved had just been a waste. A common village man who has grew up in the village mm -hmm. has more relevance in the village mm -hmm. than himself, mm -hmm. who is working in the city. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So the politicians in the city, they gather, have meetings, decide yeah. to do this, decide to do that, but nothing is affected mm -hmm. in the life of the common man. Yeah. That is what the novel shows to us. Mm -hmm. So you, you see that you see that that comparison between the, the what the West represents to Africa and what African Africa represents uh, to the West. Yeah, there's so. also another thing I discover in the story. This mm. uh, has to do with uh, the theme of gender inequality. Mm, you know, yes. The, the, so that uh, has to do. If you look at the life of Mustafa and uh, and uh, his Osna. family, Osna and the wife, Africa, yeah. You know? And even this life with uh, when you go to the West, because there's a change in gender equality in that part. Yes, body. yes. On the other side, it is a man that suffers. Mm. On our own side, yeah, it is a woman that suffers. That's, That's what I say. Can you discuss about this in detail? You know, Look the, at looking at the Osna's life, mm -hmm. I think it's more like the, the every society, what I believe is that every society develops at its own pace. Mm -hmm. You can't come from anywhere and force yeah. civilization on people mm -hmm. or your own idea because what you call civilization mm -hmm. is your own perception of life. Yeah. When Joseph Corrad wrote his book and depicted Africans as a, as a monkey looking yeah, the monkey type monkey. without yeah. clothes and jumping and clapping yeah. without language, yeah. Yeah. you know, uh, China actually felt the need to reply and tell the Western world that look, we have a system, mm -hmm. we have a culture, but you people came and destroyed it. Mm -hmm. And there's much the same ways that we, look, we can look at the season of migration in the same light because yeah. you have a, a people living a simple and rustic life mm -hmm. and you come there your influence comes to tarnish yeah. everything mm -hmm. so the contact between Osna and Osna before was a normal village mm -hmm. girl yeah. although there is that uh, aspect of her that she was uh, she was strong she could beat up the men when she was younger mm -hmm. and everybody felt she was wild but and after marrying, after marrying, after marrying uh, Mustafa Said she mellowed down and became the opposite of her old self mm -hmm. and you know she became very quiet and she doesn't talk too much mm -hmm. And she was living the life of a dutiful African lady, but I think the contact between Mustafa and herself must have given her some form of enlightenment. Mm. And you know, still it represents the contact of the West mm. or the rustic society. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so she 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 became a deviant and decided to deviate from the culture. Mm. So she decides not to get married to the man that has been chosen for her mm. by her family. And you know, the, the the tradition then was you force her into the marriage even mm. if she doesn't want it. Mm. And her parents decided to force her into the marriage and you know the repercussion was mm. the effect of uh, of the death of uh, what rise which was yeah. quite tragic it was yeah. nothing like anybody has seen nobody would ever believe that a woman would raise her hand to stab her own husband to death and also uh, disemboil herself mm. so it was tragic so you see that gender relationship mm. uh, is in line with the uh, what do you call the, the, the post-colonial yeah. discourse that we are saying things basically mm -hmm. were changing and uh, the role uh, performed by the men and the women in society were becoming uh, uh, different from what it used to be yeah. uh, in the past. All right, thank you so much for giving us a comprehensive exploration of uh, this uh, text, even though we've discussed about this before. If you remember vividly when we discussed about uh, Sudanese literature, we discussed about this same text, mm. but at the surface level. We didn't go deeply into it. Uh, but this time around, I'm sure you must have known more about this uh, text, which has to do with season of migration to the north. You understand that time of not season of migration, the season itself, movement from uh, the western world back mm. to the northern part of uh, yeah. Africa, uh, which is situated in 
a country that is also situated in East Africa. That's today. We will meet again next time. I believe you are going to enjoy beyond what we have just explored today. Mm. We have a lot uh, for you. But stay tuned. This is CBA. See you next time.